One of the things that's neat about teaching here in this very rural community on this little tiny island is that we kind of get that we're part of the environment. You're driving on roads that are right next to the ocean and you can pretty clearly see that we are interrelated with the things that grow in the ocean. My name is Marta Branch and I teach at the Orcas High School. My background is in environmental education. I'm a science nerd. It's when a glacial valley fills up with salt water, that's a fjord. It's that geologic feature, okay? And East Sound is one of them. There's so much stuff to talk about. She comes back every year and, and stays in this spot, but leaves in the winter. We call her Bertha because we, we've gotten to know her, and every year she's a little bit bigger. <laughs> All this diversity is here. Invertebrates, fish, seabirds, a few hundred yards from what is actually the biggest town in our county. And the fact that it survived is extraordinary. This particular ecosystem that you see behind me is surrounding this little island that we have out in the bay. This is Fishing Bay, and the island is called Indian Island. And because we are right next to a dense human population in the village of East Sound here, and we also have the surface runoff from the roads, we're concerned about the water quality of the watershed and how it's affecting this area. Um, we study bioswales, which is a way to filtrate water going into storm drains um, so that bad pollutants don't go into the ocean. We wanted to create a bioswale right here to filter out all the water that goes through down this parking lot. Remember the sort of three main components of the rain garden? You had plumbing, you had soil, and you had plants. Right. So we're going to try to get the plumbing done today. I wake up every day and I'm, I'm really happy to be on Orcus. We went through different kinds of ways we could take out chemicals before they got into our water. And that's really what we've been learning about. Just plants and things like this are really the best filters for water runoff in general. We want the rocks to like come up maybe two inches over the pipe. We did a lot of sample testing and we looked at the areas where the water runs into and we were going over plants that would be easy to grow, like easy to find that are native to our island. And so we thought mushrooms because they are easy to grow, easy to find and they filter really well. We start with live mushrooms, and I get to clone them. This is the fun part, I get to do some lab work. And then it goes on to pasteurized straw, which is what we have here. It has a, kind of an interesting smell. If you can sort of see, they've started to colonize. There's white mycelium uh, in the straw. The students in, in Marta's class actually tested oyster mushrooms from Orcus to demonstrate that they can break down motor oil. So while motor oil isn't necessarily the contaminant we expect coming off the roof, that suggests that they have the ability to digest a number of different petroleum products. Filtration is so important because we pollute on the streets and we pollute in the drains and all that stuff collects in our ocean. It's acidifying our ocean, changing our environments and weathers and temperatures and all kinds of things. Every single person can make a difference, just whether it's not like pouring your coffee out on the street, it's like being mindful of what goes down the drain is going directly to the ocean. The fun thing for me, working with students, is that our job isn't to tell them how things are, or tell them what to do, but to give them the opportunities to figure it out for themselves. So certainly they're the scientists in this process and we just get to support them. The whole village the pollutants get dumped right into the beach there, um, which is some of the most sensitive marine habitat in the islands. And because of the way the village is laid out, there isn't an easy solution. The standard solution for runoff, build a big facility, hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars. The kids' answer is, let's garden the landscape. Yeah, let's get some more wood chips in the next couple. Our goal is to show stormwater solutions can beautify increase property values and increase the commercial potential of the town itself. I mean, attract more people here. We try to present it as like a win-win situation for everybody and not as like a top-down government kind of solution. Do things on the cheap, but not without the care 
that I certainly as a scientist really value and the best thing about it has been having kids sit and have the patience to work for months trying to figure out whether their designs work. This project is a great example of the type of project the Captain Planet Foundation likes to fund. Sound citizen science, youth-driven, hands-on, with real environmental outcomes. As adults, we've begun to limit what we believe we can do, but children don't have those limits. And it was great to have a little bit of help so that we could get started and start demonstrating to the community that kids were on the ball and they were coming up with ideas that were better ideas than our community leadership. One of the things that I've taught my kids about is the whole idea that, yeah, you can point a finger at a tanker that goes aground and spills oil or whatever, but really there is way more oil and gasoline and hydrocarbon products that are actually coming from the road runoff. And that's everybody, that's all of us. People are used to things just rolling along, let the county and the state make the decisions. The kids have broken the ice by showing the courage to build something and take responsibility for working at it until they get it right. What I'm hoping is to create in all of my students an ability to analyze and figure out what their opinion is on a given environmental issue. I want them to understand all the pieces and be able to figure out what are the pieces for the question that's in front of them so that they become an environmentally literate citizenry capable of analyzing and voting on these things that we have before us. Community leaders here are talking about a whole street being redesigned with bioswales and gardens and they're very clear about the fact that the kids came up with the idea. And now folks are jumping on board and saying, we could do this.